A couple of weeks ago, I saw this insanely interesting article. Conjoined twins whose brains were fused together have been successfully separated. It absolutely blew my mind. So surgeons are using virtual reality to plan, practice, and collaborate on their operations. There was a pair of conjoined twins in Brazil that were joined by the head. That's four years of not being able to sit properly or even see one another. Virtual reality allowed the surgeons to practice each step of this incredibly complex operation, planning how they deal with the blood vessels, the skull, the brain tissue, and the spinal fluid circulation. You can imagine how complex this must have been. After hours in theater, they successfully separated them. And I just found this story absolutely incredible. But it left me with so many questions. Questions that led me to talk to leading surgeons who are using this technology and even being lucky enough to try it out for myself. This is a story of revolutionizing medicine, of collaboration across the world, but also one that's limited by one very important factor. Let's get into this. You know, virtual reality, augmented reality, it's gonna be used in the operating room. There's loads of different uses in this applications of surgery. That's Ian Hennessy. He's a paediatric surgeon at Alder Hay Children's Hospital. I think one of the incredible power you know, behind some of these VR applications is how you can pull in that patient's actual data from the RCT scans, from the MRI scans, uh, and then create that virtual model, which you then load into our construct down here. Um, and then you can put the, the surgeon in that same virtual reality environment with that bit of anatomy, which they can then manipulate and look at and decide about how they're going to do that operation. There are two key places where virtual reality can be really useful, before operations and within operations. Here, Ian's talking about the pre-operative planning element. I'm just gonna head across to Alder Hay now because after speaking to Ian Hennessy on the phone, he invited me across to come and see all of this equipment in action. Imagine you're going to operate on a child's heart, but not just that, this heart is completely unique, as it hasn't grown as hearts normally would. So it's nothing like the ones that you see in the textbooks. You can see the scans, but a 2D scan doesn't exactly help you to visualize exactly where you're going to make your incisions and how you're going to carry out this surgery. That's where VR comes in. That's, a, <laughs> that's the money shot there. <laughs> I wasn't sure how the MRI scan would look. Do you know, what, would it be that useful? Would it be that much different than just having it in 2D on a screen? Well, but having the 3D model and then being able to use that alongside the scan. This incredible technology builds a 3D model of the heart that you can interact with, allowing you to plan exactly how you want to do that surgery. This technology doesn't just help the surgeon, but it also allows for a great educational environment. When I put on that headset and moved the heart and lungs around, it was so helpful for understanding the anatomy. No picture in a textbook can really compete with putting your head inside a heart to look at the chambers. This is also having a real impact on the patient's understanding of their operations and of their conditions as well. If you show a patient a CT scan, they're, they're not going to you know, be able to interpret the CT scan. Whereas if you create the model for them and you load them in the same VR environment, then they have a better feel for what you're about to do to them. So you get better consent. As we move into the operation itself, we also transition from virtual reality into mixed reality. This is how I kind of got my head around it. So these three realities sit on a spectrum. Actual reality is what we're used to. It's what we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Virtual reality sits on the other end of that spectrum, where the environment around us is completely computer generated. I found it so disorientating when I got in there because I had no idea if I was about to walk into a wall. I had to get Ben to tell me where the walls were just to make sure I didn't walk into anything. What I'll do is I'm so disorientated. Oh, everyone gets disoriented. <laughs> Mixed reality sits in the middle, 
That's where we can allow the virtual and actual realities to interact with one another, and we start getting into real Tony Stark territory. I talked to Bibas Roy, a trauma and orthopedic surgeon, to better understand how we can use mixed reality in theatre. The patient-specific anatomy obtained from patient-specific imaging that can be registered to the real patient at the time of performing procedures, that's the use case. And there's been some cases already performed here in, in the UK and abroad, mostly using the HoloLens. While I was in Alder Hay, I got to try out the HoloLens for myself. My head's massive, I need to. <laughs> <laughs> is it that one? Wow. Is it that? Yeah. yeah. Here's what it is. The HoloLens is a Microsoft product. It's a pair of spectacles, essentially. But it has a projection system built in, which allows you to create a 3D model in front of you. And that can overlay the uh, real objects that you're looking at as well. So therefore, as I keep saying, registration is the key. If the real and the virtual environment are correctly registered, then they can interact. The real and virtual world can interact. So you may be asking what virtual overlays might actually be helpful during surgery. In orthopedics, they want to see the x-rays of the bones, but rather than looking away from the patient at a computer screen, with this technology, the surgeon can see it within their field of view. What Mr. Roy was also saying is that we could also overlay these scans onto the patient themselves. It isn't just the scans though. This opens doors for worldwide collaboration within surgery. Like we saw with our twins at the start, Dr. Gilani was able to collaborate from London across to Brazil and teach surgeons using virtual reality. This helps the very specialist surgeon who has done lots and lots of cases, but we are looking at you know, such a specialist area that there are very few people in the world who are doing them. So mm -hmm. they can guide another surgeon through who's very capable, but hasn't necessarily performed that particular procedure, guide them through step by step, not through video tutorials, etc., but live, working with them almost because they can see the same view as the surgeon can. So is there a limit to this technology? The main limit is our computing power and the internet connections within theatres. As with most innovations, we need the technology to catch up with the ideas. While I was wearing the HoloLens, the virtual lagged behind the actual environment. And while mixed reality has the potential to help surgeons to become more effective and efficient in their practice, without it being completely seamless environment, it may end up being more of a distraction. It will move, it will move forward, things will improve, and this will get incorporated into our everyday surgical practice. Of that, I'm certain. What we will call it, I don't know but essentially registration of patient specific images on the real patient is something that's immensely helpful and is here to stay.